Hey, uh, you know what? This this almost looks like it's gonna be a good. <clears throat> For once, the camera image is not flickering. I am gonna try this new position a little higher. I don't know what's causing it. I, don't, I honestly don't know. It'll, it may happen right in the middle of this video. It may never happen again. I don't know. But we're going to go ahead. I've, I've had to just delete uh, four videos. Progress videos. So you're seeing quite a bit of progress um, since the last video I was able to post. And I apologize for that. I hate it when that happens. Um, as you can see, there's lots of paint on the airplane and it's not completely painted uh, I still have <clears throat> now we'll go through it but anyway uh, I'm putting the panel lines on now I don't know if the camera is picking those up uh, and the way I do that I just I got these uh, micron pens let me see I don't know if maybe that they come in different, uh, they come in three packs with various uh, tip diameters. So there's a point zero 0.05 in this bin, there's a point uh, zero 0.2, and then there's, uh, I don't know, a little bit heavier uh, tip. So I started using the um, zero 0.05 and it was just too fine. So I'm going with the zero 0.2. It's probably 0 0.02 is what that is, and the other one is point. Uh, does that make sense? Mm, yeah, this is bigger, so I. Hey, you know, guys, I don't know. <laughs> All I know is that this is the the one we're going with to get the panel lines all right. I don't like over accentuated panel lines, but then again, there's no point drawing them on if you can't see them. I mean, that's a waste of time. So we have to find a happy medium. Uh, I want what I want is uh, the finest point of you know line that you can see from uh, let's say two to five feet away. Uh, so that's what I went with here. Uh, I'm a rookie at this. Um, normally, what I do is I buy trim film. I buy uh, like the mono coat uh, can come in just a sheet. Um, something like I don't know what would that be uh, 15 by seven and a half or something and then I would just slice it into very uh, skinny strips with a ruler and exacto blade just as fine of a strip as I could cut and then I would just lay those on and cut them to size and all that <clears throat> but I decided finally to try this method describing describing the lines uh, using a uh, pen. The good thing about this ink is uh, I can draw it on and if I make a mistake I can just use a bit of a damp paper towel or even just a wet finger, a wet fingertip and, and erase it and do it again. Uh, this is not like a sharpie um, in that sense but once it is dry um, you know it can be still rubbed off so what I have to do is get as far as I can and then we'll throw down a, a a semi-gloss clear coat to fix everything. That way it can't be erased um, just by me handling the airplane. Now I, I can wear gloves when I'm doing this and I do have uh, the rubber gloves but and they're they're pretty fine but they're just I don't like <laughs> I don't like my hands sweating I don't like nitrile powder you know and I, I have non nitrile I have ni I tried everything and I just don't like the way the gloves feel so I'm back to just trying to do this carefully as I say right you know how well that works out is well remains to be seen this is the first model that I've done this with uh, trying to describe the, the panel lens so well, how do we do that well or how do I do it anyway uh, and I've seen a few other guys do it and usually it's just um, you know paper template um, you know small business card size pieces of the uh, cardboard uh, uh, cardstock rather uh, long strips like this to do the longer lines where you tape it onto the airplane and then you know try to hold and slide as you go. Uh, there's all kinds of you know things that can happen uh, with the pen tip as you're trying to draw these on. I've even saw one guy was just freehanding everything just 
you know, doing this thing, kind of like pinstriping. And, uh, and that was fascinating, but, you know, I'm years away from, if ever, being able to do something like that. There's only a handful of human beings that can do certain things, uh, you know, playing multiple musical instruments well, uh, pinstriping, for crying out loud, and, you know, just any number of... And you've, so, you've all seen the YouTube videos of guys in construction that either they've been at it so long or, you know, they were well trained by somebody who had all the tricks, and they just... You know, laying out uh, tile or and grouting and just doing it, in, you know, super fast, super clean, perfect. Anyway, that's not me. Uh, so what you want to do is get a good uh, reference, um, you know, that you can use for the, where where do the panel lines go, and then you just try to do that, you know, as best you can. Now I, I normally when I would do this with the trim tape and the film and the strips that I was cutting, I would just capture the the main, uh, you know, most prominent uh, panel lines. And just, you know, so I would get probably, I would try to lay on probably about, you know, 50% of this. Uh, with the pen, you know, I'm gonna try and, and put every line that you see in these illustrations, I'm gonna try and put onto the airplane. So we've got, in this, I don't have a top view, but ultimately, um, you know, there'll be other reference material I can go to on the internet or where have, you know, what have you, where have you. There's a couple of line drawings that came with the airplane itself on the, on the plan sheets. They're not as good as, as this. You know, again, I think they followed that 50% rule. Um, you know, which is fine. Oh, this is the kind of film I was talking about. This is a, this is very dusty. It's very old. I wasn't going to use it this time. I'd have to buy a new sheet of it. And I'm sure the adhesive backing on this is pretty well shot. I mean, you can just see how old this is. But I would just, uh, you know, lay this onto a, a tape it onto a, a cutting board, basically not a not a wooden one, but sufficient. And then uh, just slice it, you know, razor thin, just very thin strips, as straight as I could make them, and then just lay them on and yada yada. It's a, it's not a bad method. It just <clears throat> what happens is because of the trim film is not it's not like decal film which is ultra thin um, it, it stands off of the airplane so that when you go to clear coat everything you you can see those raised panel lines and you know so in that in this instance I was going to try and uh, do it better do a better thing right so we just go around and, and uh, lay our templates on and and try to replicate and I'm not going to do it right now. It's, I, I've learned my lesson. If I if I work uh, without the camera, and I can focus, you know, single-minded tasks onto the airplane and and not have any issues. Uh, and I I am kind of struggling with this. I've got lines that you know don't look terrific. But what I'm hoping is, um, and you can see, you can maybe see looking down over the top. Do I have these square? And, and, you know, that's ultimately what you want to do. You just want to use every frame of reference you have. So, you know, for this line and this one, I'm going off of the cockpit line and the, and the cowling line to establish, you know, what, what is straight here, as well as, you know, the wing and everything else. So you want to just make sure with any line that goes over the top, you're, you're square and straight to the airplane. And along the side, you're square and straight to the keel. Uh, the, the side keel of the airplane, you want to get that straight because all the other lines work off of your datum points, your center lines and top dead center and side center and bottom center and all that. So you have to find those first and then, you know, use an appropriate length of card stock. For these shorty lines, I can just use a business card and, uh, you know, and away you go. Um, long runs like this need to be taped on because you, you just don't have enough fingers to hold this steady while you're tracing the line and so on so you know periodically I have to cut I have to cut new uh, cardstock templates you know uh, otherwise they get like this they start getting creased and, and uh, you know, they need to be retaped but anytime you get a crease in them they tend to want to buckle as the, the, the pen point is coming by also, the edges can get frayed, and you don't want you don't want that. So uh, again, I, I wish I you know 
<clears throat> felt like doing this on camera, I just don't. Um, and as long as it's not flickering, I thought, well, here, we'll bring up to speed on where the airplane is. Now, I had one other situation. Got the canopy finished and painted, and it looks really nice. But somewhere along the line, I uh, cracked the canopy right there. I don't even know how or when or why. Might have something to do with my cross member there, uh, but I don't. I didn't hear it happen. I didn't feel it. I just noticed it the other day. Oh, darn. Um, so I've emailed uh, Gillo to see if they could send me a replacement, which means I'll have to paint again, I'll have to make a new crossbar and all that stuff. Not to mention just cutting it out of the uh, plastic, which, I mean, okay. I want to see if they'll send me one. Again, I don't know how that cracked, um, you know, but it did. Uh, if they won't, then I'll have to buy one and, you know, that's kind of ridiculous. I got a, uh, it's like 10 bucks for the part, but almost 20 for them to put it in a box and send it to me. And I don't know if I want to spend $30 on that. I, I guess I have to, if it comes to it, we'll see what they say about uh, replacing it. Hopefully they'll, they'll do that. Although they don't have to, you know, wouldn't hold it against them if they decided not to. I did put a crossbar in there. Um, you know, but it, you know, anyway, so uh, can you, I don't know if you can see the cockpit. I don't know if I ever put a camera in there to show you the work I did. Uh, and it's probably not a great view of it from up there. What else? Um, yeah, that's it. That's all I want to do is kind of bring everybody up to speed on this. As far as paint goes, as I said, I have the airplanes almost fully painted. What it needs to happen now is the reinforced section of the lower fuselage, this area right here, the belt, what I call the belly pan. On uh, the actual aircraft, um, a good part of it uh, was reinforced with stainless steel, and it was a, a panel that came back about to here, and it just was like a, you know, like a V shape. And it would have been about the width of my finger going back on either side and wrapping around. And in fact, you can see it in this illustration. Uh, maybe. So it would have been this area between these two stripes here where this little filigree is. And that was reinforced with stainless steel. And on a lot of the airplane, and I think including the belly pan and, and elsewhere around the cockpit for pilot protection, they used duralumin, which is an aluminum composite that has other metal alloys. It's an, it's an alloy compound. Uh, and, you know, so that's a, t a sort of a different shade of metal when it was used in the skin. That duralumin was largely most, or mostly used in the framing of uh, the bulkheads and the um, on which wing ribs and, and certain other areas um, where they needed a stronger, but, you know, still maintain uh, a, a light weight. Um, so duralumin was used for that. The other issue that's still pending here is getting the landing gear to work, right? We got it finished up as far as it goes. So there's our gear, right? I've got it silver paint on the uh, exterior. We got the uh, interior green, right? And uh, the wheel caps are on and, you know, they're fixed. The, the wheels don't turn. I don't, they don't need to. It's just a static display model. They don't need to roll. You know, if it was an RC airplane, we'd have to go about the landing gear a little differently to make sure it rolls. These are the thousand pounders, I guess they are. Uh, painted the noses, and I've got the um, strapping um, material replicated there. So they'll look like they're strapped to the pylons when we get to that point of attaching those. I got the fuel tank, uh, centerline fuel tank here, and it goes r right about, I guess, there something like that I guess you know straightly but approximately in this position so that's ready to go um, and then I have to do the rear landing gear doors and I'm still you know thinking about how that's gonna fly or how I'm gonna go about that but uh, those are some of the larger remaining assembly steps that have to and paint steps that have to go on um, and then it's you know panel line panel line panel line and then it's decals when I get those in are supposed to be here next Wednesday Thursday the decals 
and Kali Graphics, and uh, and like I said, I'll I'll do a video on how those you know what they look like, along with all the stencils, you know, all the little you know no step, no push, two hundred octane fuel or whatever the hell it is, hundred octane. I I don't know, man, whatever it is um, for this airplane. Any, any any little stencils, warning labels. Um, access panel information, all the stencils uh, are going to go onto the airplane. Right, so anyhow, that's, uh, that's our project at this point. I hope the uh, video was uh, steady the whole time, no flickering, and I apologize for the four that are, were eaten alive. It was just, there's no way I could post them. They would have put people into epileptic seizures. Anybody who was sensitive to that would have uh, would have come after me with a pitchfork so i'm not i i just deleted them you know i wish i could have saved them or done something else i have to figure out why this is happening obviously that that would be important thing to do but this still looks steady i, st I don't see any flickering on the uh, screen here so hopefully it'll be fine thanks for watching this video and uh, we'll get back real soon later <laughs>